Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, today I have got a kind of a new old drone. Uh, it's a drone that I've had before and tested, and actually I've tested a couple of versions uh, of it. It is the uh, Esheen EX4. Now, the uh, anybody that knows uh, the Esheen EX4 knows that that is Banggood's house brand, Esheen is, and the EX4 is twins, uh, with the uh, the original version was the Seafly Faith, uh, and then the JJRC X12, and I had a previous version of the EX4, the 1.2 kilometer version, and uh, and most recently I tested the JJRC X12, which was the 1.2 kilometer version, which is pretty much a twin, uh, although there are some subtle differences I've noticed, uh, but uh, in any case. I want to show you uh, how it comes in the case. It comes, it comes with a really neat little kit. I know Banggood is going to have it on sale uh, coming up for Black Friday and through the holidays, uh, etc. Uh, so I will put the discount code in the description down below. I know it's going to be well under 200 bucks, uh, so it might be worth your while. Uh, but in any case, I, I really want to show you the kit. That it comes with uh, because I think they, they put together a pretty darn good uh, little kit, pretty complete, easy to carry around, etc. But uh, in the meantime, uh, let's look at the specifications. And rather than me reading them off my screen here, I thought I would just pick up the camera here and, uh, and just uh, show it to you. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can move this where uh, you won't see as much glare, but uh, uh, the the, the main difference, and they you see they have it highlighted there, is that it is, uh, instead of a 1,000 meter transmission dish, uh, distance, it's a 3,000 meter, so essentially three kilometers. Uh, but the battery, it's a 2,400 milliamp battery, flight time of about 25 minutes. You know, we all know that uh, they're op often very optimistic about flight times, and it's been a, found to be less than that. It does have an optical flow sensor for altitude hold. Uh, that on this drone is just below three meters. So when it's just off the ground is when that will uh, will uh, will be in effect. Uh, and then uh, the SD card max, 32 gigabyte SD card. So that's important. Many of us have 64 gigabytes. You can't use it. You're going to have to use a 34 gig uh, SD card. Uh, it does have a 4K uh, camera in it. Now, when they say 4K, if you look down below there where it says photo resolution, uh, that's in photographs. Video is still 1080p or 1920 by 1080p. Some some people may call that 2K. I call it 1080. Uh, so, uh, it and it does have a digital zoom on it, although I'm going to be honest with you, that is not anything. You, as soon as you zoom in, you you lose so much resolution that it really... You know, you could just crop in in post-production. It probably makes more sense, but it does have a three-axis gimbal. Uh, and uh, there again at the bottom, they have in, in red uh, that they're talking about the uh, distance, 1.2 kilometer. That was the original version. And this is the uh, the Pro, they call it, which is the three-kilometer uh, version of it. So that's basically all the specs. Let's uh, Let's open up the uh, the little kit that it comes in now because it's pretty darn cool. So uh, let me show you what's in the kit. All right, everybody, here is the little uh, bag that they give you or case that they give you with the uh, Esheen uh, EX4. And I just thought it's a pretty sweet little kit the way they do it. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it around here to flip open the uh, top and it just unzips. And by the way, I should have mentioned you do have an outside compartment here uh, that you could put, you know, SD cards, documentation, or whatever you wanted into. So let me point out here that there is a document sleeve in the lid that you can put all your uh, documentation into, which is pretty handy. Okay, so in the kit itself, and this is just, I, like I said, this is really cool, really easy to carry around. So, uh, well, before we get into actually looking at the drone, that's under this little piece of styrofoam right here. You do have the uh, controller. The controller is a pretty decent unit. There's the antenna there. And, uh, well, I guess we can go over it real quick here. On and off button right there. Push that. 
and you'll see it turns green. That way you know it's on. Both lights mean it's fully charged. And then uh, this button right here is for, uh, on the top left, the one that's uh, marked M, is for switching from ADDI mode to uh, GPS mode. You've got a return to home button on the controller right here, which I always appreciate when they uh, include that on the controller. Uh, this button right here is for taking a picture, short press for taking a picture, long press for starting video, long press again for turning off video. Uh, take off and landing button uh, right there in the uh, in the bottom left. Uh, and then uh, I will point out that uh, it does have a, uh, a micro uh, USB slot there for charging. I appreciate that it does have an internal battery. Uh, and then uh, this scroll wheel right here is for uh, moving the uh, gimbal up and down, as we're all familiar with. And then this is the uh, this is the mount for your phone, and we'll get to that here in a second. So I've got the two battery version. Uh, this is the uh, the battery, uh, 2400 milliamps, I believe. Yeah, 2400 milliamp battery. Uh, you know, said to give you a 25 minute flight time, but you know that's uh, probably pushing it a little bit. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, you know. It simply snaps into the bottom of the drone. We'll show that in a second here. And then in the middle here, they just put all the other stuff that you usually get. USB cable. Uh, there is a uh, there is a, a strap for, I'm not going to pull it out, but there's a strap for, a uh, shoulder strap for the case itself. And then on the other side here is uh, some extra props. Oh, let's stuff that stuff back in there. And then let's take a look at the drone itself. That's what you've been waiting for. So here it is, the Esheen EX4, and it is a foldable drone. Let's uh, let's go ahead and fold out the arms here, and they just fold straight out. So it's uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, and obviously, I haven't taken any tags off yet, so we'll do that here pretty quick. So I'll show you how the battery fits in. The battery just goes right here in the bottom. You push the back of it in or towards the front of the drone, and then push it down and click and you can see that both of these are, are in place so you know it's uh, solidly in, uh, clicked in place. And then the SD card slot is right here, right behind the gimbal. I've already put uh, a 32 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme SD card in there. And then there is that, uh, that three axis gimbal in the front. There's no gimbal cover for it, but uh, I think it's fairly well protected uh, when it's in the case here. And these are the sonic sensors, and that right there is the downward facing optical flow sensor. You can actually select that in the app if you want to look straight down. I guess that would be handy in some cases, but it's a very pretty low resolution camera. So there's a good look at the drone from the top down. And the front there, you can see the, uh, uh, the gimbal and the camera. Okay, then underneath, there, there's another layer underneath here, and there's some more goodies under there. This is the uh, the charge, uh, well, I guess you'd call it the charger. You have to plug it into a USB power brick, but you simply, uh, let me grab a battery and show you. You simply uh, place a battery in here, and you can see the light blinking there. When that light is green, Tells you you have a fully charged battery, so you can check your batteries that way too. It's got a micro USB port right there uh, that you would just plug into, then plug the other end into a charger. And it does take a while to charge these batteries. So I would allow, and I'll tell you, it, I would allow at least probably four hours to charge a battery on this guy using a standard two amp charger. So then we got one more little goodie down here in the bottom of this. And uh, this is your cell phone mount. So that stretches out, clips into the back of the controller. We might as well show you how that works. So your mobile device holder just clips into the back here. And let's wait for that click. Well, I didn't really hear a click there, but it feels like it's solidly on there. And then obviously you just would put your mobile device in right there. 
So there it is. That's uh, everything that comes in the box with the uh, Ishin EX4. Now, like I said, I do have the two battery version. If you had the one battery version, obviously one of these slots would be empty, uh, but, uh, but it's a handy little case. There it is, the Ishin EX4. Very lightweight, easy to carry around. Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, okay, so we've got the Ishin EX4. You've already seen the unboxing. You've seen what's in the box. Uh, let's get this guy in the air. I'm out at uh, Heroes Park. It's about uh, 43 degrees, I think, on UAV forecast. Really not much wind, about two mile an hour winds. So I feel a little bit of a breeze, but not too bad. Uh, bright sun today. I mean, we've had some winter weather lately, but the sun came out today. It's cold, but it's sunny. So it's a, a probably a good opportunity to try this guy out. So uh, I'm going to put it in the air. We're, what we're looking for is video quality. Hopefully we get some good, nice, uh, jello-free, stabilized video with it. 1080p uh, video. Uh, and then uh, uh, we'll check that signal strength too. So what we're looking for is just a good solid FPV and signal strength. And if we have time, we'll check out, uh, I know it does an orbit and does uh, GPS tracking. And if we get the chance, uh, we'll try that stuff out too. But mostly we just want to get it in the air, get a first flight under our belt and, uh, and see how it goes. Let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, connect to the uh, Wi-Fi. So let's check that out here, see what we can find. Okay, so it took me a couple of minutes to get connected to the Wi-Fi there, ground uh, 1EA3B7. So let's see if we can get into now, into uh, FPV with the drone. We've got the controller on and the drone on. And we have to allow the EnjoyFly app to connect to our wet network. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Let's click interface view. Yeah, no, we still don't have a connection. So I am not sure what's going on. I've had this problem. I had this problem with the original EX4 and uh, uh, the uh, uh, JJRC uh, uh, X12 as well. Uh, it's, uh, it always seems to be a struggle to get these guys connected. So I am going to shut down the app here and make sure that we are connected and we are and let's go let's open up that app again yeah now it's saying bind so this has happened to me before as soon as i restart the app i get that bind bind success it says so now when we go into interface view we're going to see uh i'm, I'm sure it yeah we'll, we've got fpv now uh, so the first thing we want to do is go in and do the uh, compass calibration. So I'm going to hit those three dots in the top right there. And, uh, well, let's do, uh, we might as well do a gyro calibration. It's sitting on the ground now. So I was looking at the drone to see if it was still on. Because we've been sitting here for a while. And I've had that happen in the past when you're sitting there for a while it'll shut down that gimbal. So we may very well have to restart here. So it didn't tell me if we got a good gyro calibration or not. Let's try that again. Yeah, calibration failure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave everything on. I'm gonna restart the drone. I, Cause I, I recall having that issue in the past. Yeah, it was hard to see the drone in the bright sunlight, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, the drone had shut down because it had been sitting there so long. Uh, so anyway, just keep that in mind that you may have to restart the drone. So uh, just for the fun of it, I'm going to get out of the app again, and we're going to go back in to make sure that we have a good connection. So I shut down the app. Let's uh, make sure that we still, yeah, we still have a Wi-Fi connection. And uh, let's go back into the Enjoy Fly app one more time. And we got bind, so we'll do that bind success interface view. And we'll give it a second here. And, and uh, there we have uh, a, uh, our, our FPV view. So let's click those three dots again. Let's try gyro calibration again. Click OK. And calibration failure. So I have no idea why it won't 
why it's not doing that. But I've 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 had these same kind of issues with this drone before, so we're just going to proceed uh, without that because I I there's no reason that it shouldn't be working. So let's try the compass calibration now. So with this you have to click that button that says calibrating and it doesn't seem to want to do that. Well I clicked it so let's spin the drone around and see what happens. The light is uh, solid green and it should be blinking. So I'm going to spin it around. Yeah, now it's, it, I think I saw a blue there. So let's go, I think this guy is counterclockwise. So I got three times there and it's solid green. Uh, so we're going to go then up. And the light is solid green. Ah. So I'm telling you, I do not think it was in calibration mode there. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say. Like I said, I remember having these problems with the original EX4 and uh, with, the, uh, with the JJRC X12. So, uh, you know, let's, I'm going to go in one more time. Yeah, and it's it's still got me on that calibration screen. Okay, I'm going to try one more time just for the fun of it here. Gyro calibration. Calibration failure. Compass calibration. And we're going to click on calibrating. And I can see the color of the calibrating button change uh, but I'm not seeing the uh, I'm not seeing the light change on the back of the drone so I we're, clearly we're not in calibration mode uh, I don't I, I honestly I don't know what to say that's a problem with this uh, drone this is the the third one of this drone that I've had and they've all had a similar problem so uh, don't know I'm not sure what to say. Well, let's just give it one more try. Calibration compass, calibrating. And no, the light is still solid on the back of the drone. So you know what we're going to do? We're just going to go ahead and fly this baby uh, and we'll see how it goes. So uh, let me get out of the way so you guys can see it here. And my shadow is over the top of the drone, but let's, uh, where I'm going to go ahead and click uh, take off right here on the, uh, on the controller. So the drone looks pretty darn good, uh, pretty stable there. I'm going to do a long press on the controller to start recording. And it is recording. And it's moving around a little bit. It's doing that classic circular motion that uh, would make you think it needs a compass calibration. Uh, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah, we better, uh, we better bring it down. So, yeah, it's, that's a classic movement when a drone needs a calibration, is you'll get that. So, I am just going to land it, and that was not a very elegant landing. A drone flipped over on its top when it hit the grass, but, you know, it would have been worse if it was up in the air. So, uh, I'm going to shut everything down, restart it, and we'll see if we can get a calibration with this guy. So I just want to show you here, the drone isn't hurt. It just mowed a little grass and, and pushed these in. So uh, we're going to shut it off right now. And that probably corrupted that video file when I started video, but that's okay. Uh, and I'm going to shut down the... Uh, controller and I'm going to shut down the app and we're going to see if we can start all over again and try and get a calibration. I'm not sure, you know, we we may not get this guy in the air today. Okay, so we're connected Wi-Fi again. I've got the drone on and the controller on. Let's uh, let's go ahead and go into uh, the app, the Enjoy Fly app, and we'll try the Enjoy Fly app again 
if that doesn't work, we'll try the Seafly app, which is uh, to fly the Seafly drone, which is the same drone. And I found that sometimes that'll work. So let's go into the Enjoy Fly app and see if it, yeah, it's asking us to bind. That's a good thing. Bind success. So let's go into interface view. And there we've got FPV, so that's good. So let's try that gyro calibration again. Calibration failure, there's a shocker. Uh, okay, let's do the try the compass calibration. And I'm going to click the calibrating button, and that should take me into the calibration process. And, and you know, I can see the button change color when I press on it, but it, it's not doing anything. So, so uh, tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to get out of the Enjoy Fly app, and we're going to try the Sea Fly app, and let's see if that'll work. So I'm opening up the Sea Fly app now. And it says you'd like to connect to the local net to the network. So I might have to shut everything down and start over because it didn't give me that binding message. But let's try and see. Yeah, unconnected. So let's get out of that. We're going to go shut it down. Open the app back up. Drone is bound to the app. So that's good. Okay, there we've got it. So we've got uh, we've got an FPV view, uh, and you can see the Seafly app. It just looks identical to the EnjoyFly app. So let's go back. Let's go in and let's try gyro calibration. Calibration failure. <laughs> There's a shocker. Okay, let's try uh, calibrating the compass, and I'm going to click on calibrating. And kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's just exactly the same. It's not. Uh, it's not giving me anything. I don't know if there's a way you can manually calibrate the compass without the app. Sometimes, through you know, you can push the sticks out or something and put the drone in calibration mode. Yeah, I can tell you that. Uh, Calibrating the compass just shouldn't be this hard. So I'm going to take a look at the instructions here real quick and see if there's a manual way to uh, to put the uh, drone into magnetic calibration. Yeah, I just looked in the uh, instruction manual and I don't see any way to manually put the drone into calibration mode. Uh, we have got a solid green light, which uh, indicates it's supposed to flash blue-green if it needs a compass calibration. It's not. We've got a solid green light. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to shut everything. I'm going to do a, a complete shutdown and turn it back everything back on again. We're going to try this one more time. Okay, so we want to make sure we're again uh got the Wi-Fi connected here. Should automatically connect now. Okay, so there we are looks like we're connected. It's still spinning around a little bit. Okay, we are officially connected. Uh so let's get out of that. Let's go back into the app. And, uh, you know, I didn't see any difference between EnjoyFly or Seafly, so we're going to go back into the EnjoyFly app, and it's asking me to bind, which is a good thing. Bind success, interface view. And there we have FPV again. Let's go back in, and we'll try the gyro calibration. Calibration failure. Let's try compass calibration. Yeah, okay, we got it now. Hey, so uh, calibration success, that's, uh, that's always good. Let's see if we can get out of this page now. There we go. Okay, uh, well, let's try taking off one more time. I will show you one thing that's kind of awkward about these, uh, about these uh, uh, antenna is with your phone on there, it's difficult to get them in the right position. I guess you could tilt your phone up further and move them up, but then they, they're kind of, anyway, so just something you need to be aware of. So so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to, again, we're going to click take off on the controller here.
and it looks a lot more stable this time. And again, we're going to start recording, holding down this button. And we have the indication on the map that we're recording. And uh, no more twirling around. It says we're ready for takeoff. Well, that's good. Because we're already we've already taken off. Let's uh, twirl it around here and bring it in. It's sinking a little bit, but not too bad. Doesn't look too bad uh, on screen. Okay, let's uh, let's let's get it in front of the camera here. That's probably about as close as I dare come. And there you can see that gimbal in action there. That's why I was rocking that back and forth. And you know the drone is, is very stable right now. So it's doing great. So uh, I think what we need to do now is a, is a manual drony. So uh, we're going to go reverse and up. little bit of cross coupling there kind of getting used to this controller and I was looking at the drone instead of the uh, let's see if we can drop the camera down here a little bit and and the drone is looking into the Sun right now so you're gonna see a little bit of uh, of uh, uh, probably uh, prop shadows in the in the picture and so forth let's uh, let's go straight forward here and we'll turn around and go the other way and you will get uh, kind of bringing it right over the top of us here and you'll get once we turn it around we'll get away from that sun flare that you see because we are the the winter sun is really low in the sky so I'm stopping right there I'm gonna yaw around and uh, one thing that you've got to remember on a Wi-Fi drone like this is to keep the uh, props uh, pointed towards the uh, towards the drone or excuse me I said the props I meant the antenna towards the drone so uh, full stick forward here and we are in uh, let's see how fast we're going about four meters per second which is about what I remember with this drone so what you're gonna look for here is good uh, solid uh, jello free video let's see if we can move it around here I'm, i don't want to go over any buildings or see i'm trying to do a manual rotation and it's just a little bit uh tricky but uh but i think we got it there let's grab some more altitude yeah and it's it's given me a magnetic interference warning which i have to tell you uh I, that that's with the other ex4 I had I would get that same same warning so I mean I don't I don't even I'm not sure even what to say there so I'm gonna stop right here for a second I'm gonna stop video recording and then we're gonna take a picture and I'm gonna do that with a short press on the controller that's the new Costco you guys have seen that in some of my other videos and uh, we had some some Chinese characters at the bottom I'm assuming that said that it took a picture okay so let's start recording again and we did and uh, I'm gonna head to the other corner of the park here I am holding the uh, trying to yaw around and, 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 and we we're getting a little bit of stutter there on the uh, FPV and I'm pointing the antenna directly at the drone. Okay, so let's go to the opposite corner here and let's, uh, I wanna do the same thing. And you saw the drone kinda of tip over there a little bit uh, when we, uh, as, I, as I went forward. And again, I, we were up to five meters per second there. And I'm banking to the drones right here a little bit cause I don't wanna go over those houses. And uh, let's uh, let's see if we can get a a good uh, picture of the Boise front here. 
So that, what you're looking at there, is the, uh, the, the Boise foothills and the Boise mountains. At the top of that is a ski resort, Bogus Basin Ski Resort. So we're going to stop recording again. And then we're going to do a short press and we're going to take a picture. Perfect. Okie dokie. So uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start uh, recording again. And instead of sending the drone into the sun, I want to optimize our best chance of getting some good video. So I'm just pulling full reverse on the stick straight back and it should come just pretty much over the top of us i can tell you you're seeing that magnetic warning at the top of the screen but the drone is is handling just fine seeing no uh you know the drone isn't swirling around or or doing any of those rotating movements that you that you worry about uh when when you have a magnetic a compass problem so the only reason I'm not getting too excited about that is because I have experience with this particular drone. Uh, and so, you know, I, I've seen that before. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you, anytime you see a drone that gives you a, a, a compass calibration warning like that, land it immediately because often you can lose control. But like I said, because I've had an EX4 in the past, I'm familiar with that, with that warning. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's bring it back over the top of us here. And again, what I want to tell you that what you want to look for is uh, is good jello-free uh, stabilized video. So I am going to bring it down here, turn it around. We're going to drop some altitude. I have to tell you, the drone is 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 handling okay for what I would expect. Uh, for a drone in this price category. Now, you know, you have to understand that you're not going to get the kind of uh, buttery smooth controls that you're going to get with a, you know, a DJI uh, Mini or, or something like that with a drone like this. And now we're looking directly into the sun again. So I just want you to take that into consideration. So, uh, so let's see, what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to go into, we're in position hold when you see position uh, that means that we've got to, that we've got GPS and there's two green lights on the controller here so I know we're in GPS mode but if I click on that position uh, I can go into altitude hold mode let's do that for a second well if I can get it to take it it's not taking it there so I'm gonna get out of that and I'm gonna I can press this M button so we should yeah, so it's in altitude hold mode. So now there's no GPS. It's just depending on the uh, on on the uh, uh, the the camera on the bottom and on, on those ultrasonic sensors to tell it where it's at in space and where it needs to go. And it should be faster in that mode too. Although it doesn't seem to be. If anything, it's slower. Okay, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, do not go into altitude mode when, on a windy day because you're liable to see the drone moving around now. It doesn't have a GPS lock, so any little breeze will blow it around. So we're going to hold that M button down again, and we're back into position, so it's locked into GPS mode again. Uh, that's 90% of the time, that's where you're going to want to leave the drone. Uh, I'm going to take the drone to the other side of me here because... Uh, I, we're facing into the sun, and that's just not fair to this guy. Let's turn it around. And there we are. Uh, and that picture looks a little better because uh, the sun is behind the drone now. Nice blue sky there. I can tell you it looks pretty good on FPV here. We're down to 40% battery, so we better hurry along here. Uh, we're going to put the drone into circle mode here. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna, before I do that, I need to bring it right over the top of me because the way this guy works is uh, you, uh, it's, it starts a 360. Didn't have it very high off the ground there. Okay, so the drone, 
Yeah, we're getting a magnetic field interference warning again. Yeah, I don't know what that is. There's no, we're right in the middle of the grass here, but we're gonna go into uh, circle mode here. Orbit, they're calling it. You're, you're hearing the noise of the drone because it's right above me. And you're gonna see the drone start to circle around here. It's just doing a 360. So what we can do then is we can back it off and that's how we change the, uh, the radius. And you can see the drone circling around. So it's in orbit mode here. This is, a, this is one of the things that this drone does really well is this orbit mode. Let me uh, get the camera down here. And, and I wanna show you, we can, we can increase that uh, radius some more. I'm pulling, well, let's see, I have to, and I was pulling back on it, so it must limit your radius. Yeah, it limits the radius. So how far out were we there? About 11 and a half meters, about 10 meters. So it must limit the radius to, to like 10 meters. Let's see if we can go up. And we can. And there it's giving us that warning again. And I'm not ignoring it. I'm just telling you I've seen it before. And the drone is is working just fine. I'm not seeing any toilet bowling, any of that circular motion with the drone. So, uh, I, I, like I said, I've, I've seen that warning on the EX4 and the uh, JJRC X12, so that's why I'm not uh, doing something about it. Uh, okay, so that's orbit mode. It will also do, uh, let's go back into position. So you see the drone there, and it kind of wandered around a little bit. Let's uh, Let's back it off here, and I'm gonna pick the gimbal back up, lower a little bit of altitude, and we're gonna go into tracking mode. And uh, let's, uh, let's just see if this guy will, uh, will, how well it'll track us. Now, what I wanna tell you is, yeah, we're down to 40% battery. Tracking mode on this drone, uh, it's GPS tracking, so it won't exactly keep you in center of frame. So we're going to just click on track, and it should have me. Let's uh, let's walk away here. We're going to walk away, and yeah, the drone is following me. Now, obviously, just like I was telling you, yeah, it's doing a great job of of tracking. Uh, what what it's not doing though, and you can back it up. <laughs> So what I'm gonna warn you about in this mode is you have to be careful uh, that you don't back the drone up or move it sideways into an obstacle, because it'll do it. There's no, there's no obstacle avoidance on this guy. Yeah, well that works darn good. Okay. So uh, I, think we've, uh, I think we've proved our point with tracking mode there. So uh, yeah, we're down to 20% battery. Let's uh, go ahead and back into position mode. And I'm gonna back the drone off. Move it around here. And uh, get some altitude, back it off, and we're gonna do a return to home and let's just see how close we can get to the, uh, to the pad here. And I'll cancel return to home if I need to. Let's back it off a little more. Like I said, we're at 20% battery. So I'm gonna hit return to home on the controller, which is in the upper right-hand corner here. And it's beeping, yeah, and it says return to home is running and I see the drone coming back to us. And it's... Uh, That's it, it's 30 meter return to home height, and it's right above us. Positioning itself, and coming down. It's gonna be a ways off. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel this, see if I can cancel it. 
Yeah, I was able to cancel it by pushing the button. So let's, uh, let's see if we can land it on the pad here and avoid uh, mowing the grass like we did earlier. It still wants to land. Well, no, maybe it's just moving down. Okay, let's, uh, let's move it above the pad here. Let me drop the gimbal down. Yeah, that's as far down as I can get it. Well, there's no point in that because it's not pointing 90 degrees down. Let's try that. Yeah, you can't, you, it won't point fully 90 degrees down. So uh, we're gonna have to eyeball this. Well, we ended up in the grass anyway. As soon as the drone got near the ground, I think its its own air cushion moved it around a little bit, but, uh, and I was holding the stick straight down uh, and it took it a while to shut off the motors. But let's stop recording because uh, you'll, you'll corrupt a file if you don't stop recording before you turn off the drone. So we're stopped recording. Uh, I'm gonna shut everything down. I've got another battery. We're gonna put another battery in it and uh, and, I've never been successful at it before, but we're going to see if we can do a little waypoint mission. So what I did there was uh, what, what, what I've called in the past a hot swap. Uh, so we'll see how that works uh, if we get FPV back here. It says ready to take off, but yeah, we don't, we don't have FPV on the drone and uh, We've got a different, you know, it's just saying still 10% battery. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to restart the app and go from there. Or maybe just, let's try this. Let's just try going out of interface view and back in. Back to the main page and back in. Yeah, and that did it. Okay. So it was that simple. Uh, so uh, let's uh, try a calibration again. Uh, Although, you know, it's not asking for a calibration now, the magnetic calibration, but we had those warnings. So let's just do it just for the fun of it. Yeah, and I'm getting having that same problem we had previously. It's just not going into calibration mode. Pressing that button and nothing's happening. So let's, uh, I'm, what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna shut down the app and, and start it back up and see what happens. And the only reason I'm doing this is because uh, we had that issue uh, earlier. Okay, so it is asking us to bind, which is a good thing, bind success, that's another good thing. Interface view. And yeah, we've got FPV. Let's go try that calibration again. And nothing. Well, I know there's a lot of people that uh, fly this drone. If you guys have some ideas into how to make that successful, uh, let me know. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and take off here uh, and uh, and see how it goes. If we see that toilet bowling, we'll we'll land it just like we did last time. So uh, so again, we're going to hit. Uh, well, let's start recording before we even take off. We're recording, and we're going to hit take off on the controller. And it did not take that command. Yeah, let me see if I can. I can't manually start. Oh, you know what? It is in calibration mode. Uh, I'm looking at the light on the back. It's in calibration mode. So let me calibrate it. When you see this blue and... and uh, and I'm gonna hold this up to the camera so you can see it. It's going blue and, and, uh, and uh, red. So, uh, so let's go counterclockwise. Yeah, now we're seeing re green and red. So then we change. Yeah, now we got solid green. So, we're, so it, it put itself into calibration mode or maybe pushing that button did and I just wasn't getting the graphic in the app. I, I, I can't tell you for certain, but it, we, we calibrated it. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna restart the uh, the drone because uh, it look, looks to me like the the gimbal went into uh, automatic shutdown. So we're gonna shut the drone off and we'll restart it. Okay, so I can see the uh, the gimbal is working again. I was looking at it at the front, so uh, it looks to me I'm gonna stop recording and we're gonna restart the app because. Uh, we were kind of frozen on screen there. We'll get this, guys. Find success. Start flying, it says this time, instead of interface view. Well, that's encouraging. Remote control control, that's also encouraging. And there, uh, we've got a good, uh, a good FPV view. So let's start recording again. And it's recording, and let's hit uh, takeoff one more time here. And the drone is uh, is looks pretty stable. Yeah, it looks looks nice and stable. So I'm gonna fly it out there a ways, and we're gonna go into the map. Now I have never been successful uh, doing this with this drone before, so I'm clicking on the. Oh, so I need to stop video recording to do that. That's interesting. So we're stopping recording. Disconnect the Wi-Fi. Well, but we already have a map, huh? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it meant by that, but uh, let's see here. Yeah, so we're in Heroes Park, so two, three, Four. And I'm going to get some altitude just to make sure that we're good. And uh, let's click start. And the drone is, uh, yeah, it's moving to the first position. Hey, this is great, guys. This is the first time that I've been able to get this to work. Now, I wonder if I can, and it, and it shows uh, the drone on the screen here. This is pretty darn cool, folks. I'm pretty stoked here, because I've never been able to do a Waypoint uh, mission with an EX-4 or a JJRC uh, X-12. Look at that, it's heading to its fourth, uh, fourth position. And that ring that we see around the top there, I'm assuming is uh, probably the max radius that it's gonna let you do a waypoint mission. So it completed the mission and let's see if it hovers there, if it returns. Yeah, it's just hovering there. Okay, so, uh, so let's click stop. Okay, so what you guys aren't going to see is I did some flying around here uh, with the drone and I forgot to turn on video. So obviously I, I edited all that out. Well, I'm saying that uh, future Idaho quadcopter is going to edit all that out because there's no point in just looking at the uh, FPV view. And unfortunately, uh, well, you know, we have enough battery left. We did a, a, a waypoint mission, and but I forgot to turn on video. I think we should uh, bring the drone back towards us, and uh, and let's let's do another uh, let's do another waypoint mission, so I can get it on video. I'm gonna bring the drone down here just a little. Yeah, there we're getting that magnetic field interference again. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure what that is. And there again, we've got uh, a little bit of, uh, a, a, a little bit of uh, facing towards the sun. So I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to go into the, uh, the map. And we already have the map downloaded, so we know we're good to go here.
So I'm just going to do a quick little, look at that. So it's not, how do I get out of that? So it's not getting rid of my previous uh, waypoint mission. Well, we didn't need to. So there's our waypoint mission. The drone should end up right in front of us when we're done. So we're going to click start. And I clicked starting on recording. So the drone will move to the first position and it's moving right along. And we should have uh, just enough battery to get through this. And the drone's turning around. So uh, I'm, I'm leaving the, uh, and there's position two. It's rushing to position three. Boy, it's moving right along. Yeah, on this, uh, we're not, I, I'm not able to see. Let me see if I, we can see the, yeah, it's going at full speed, five meters per second. Yeah, no, I'm not going to stop video recording, so we're going to wait. It's heading for its last uh, uh, waypoint position now. So it wants me to, in, in order to get into that screen, it's telling me that it wanted me to stop video recording, which I'm okay doing now. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get in there, because it reached the end. Yeah, that's kind of a, whoop. Yeah, okay, let's uh, stop video recording then. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so we're going to click stop. We'll close that, click stop. And uh, yeah, let's go back into uh, regular uh, mode and let's start recording again. And let's, uh, let's back the drone off. And... Uh, we will uh, do a return to home again and land this baby. I'm backing it up because I, I don't want to face it into the sun. I'm trying to kind of optimize our, uh, our view here because it isn't fair, the, the, the sun is so low in the sky, it's not fair to the drone to have to, uh, the camera to have to deal with that. Okay, so we put it into return to home mode and it's already at its 30 meter return to home height and it's coming back quickly. So we'll see how it does here. And again, uh, if it looks like it's going to uh, mow the grass, I'll stop it. Dropping the gimbal so you guys can see. Yeah, it's not really, uh, it won't look straight down. It's pretty close guys. I don't know, I'm gonna let it land. It looks like we're, well, we were further off than I thought. Uh, I was looking straight up at it, and uh, it's, as you guys can see, um, it's about, uh, oh, I don't know, probably three or four feet behind the pad, but it was right in line with the pad, so I thought I had it there. So uh, we're going to stop recording. You always want to stop recording, and I hit that button again to stop that beeping, and uh, let, me, uh, let me get it shut down here. And uh, and we'll do uh, we'll do our conclusion. Okay, guys, uh, the Ishin uh, EX4. Uh, you know, overall, I'm going to say we had a successful flight. The the only uh, negative I can say about this particular flight is the struggles that we had to calibrate the drone. You know, I don't know if it's an app thing. It could be a, a deal in the app. It it never did take a gyro calibration. It always said unsuccessful. I, I had that issue with the other EX4 I had and, and with the JJRC X12. Had that issue with both those drones too. Sometimes it would take it, sometimes it wouldn't. I don't know why that is. It could simply be the app. I don't know. Uh, same thing with the compass calibration can be hit and miss. Uh, so uh, we did get a couple successful calibrations. Uh, I think maybe one of the things you can pay attention to 
is if you hit that button, it makes me think it might be an app deal because I, I would hit that button and it wouldn't go into that calibration screen where it would tell you to, to go horizontal and then vertical. Uh, but if when, when, when I did it the second time, that, that last flight, I, I looked at the back of the drone and it was blinking, uh, I believe it was blue-red, which told me it was in calibration mode. So I did the, the horizontal calibration, it changed then to green-red, uh, I did the vertical calibration, it changed to solid green, then I knew I had calibrated uh, the compass, so that's good to know. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, other than those issues, it, it, it flew fine, and I mean, it, it handled fine, you know, uh, you got to put that in context of the, 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 the price of this drone, uh, you know, it's uh, under $200 now, the regular price is over $200, but 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 it seems to be on sale almost all the time now and you can get it for I've seen it as low as 169 bucks I don't know exactly what Banggood's deal is on it right now but we'll, whatever it is we'll put the codes in there and uh, get the best deal you can uh, but the thing that I was pretty tickled with is uh, how well it did uh, the uh, 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 waypoint mission now what you guys didn't see uh, well, I don't know if I'll put it in the video or not. You'll know by now if I did or not. But I forgot to do recording for the first two uh, waypoint missions I did. I didn't turn on video recording. So I'll probably edit those out. If I didn't, you'll see it. But we did another one and it did it just perfectly. So did waypoint missions fine. We did an orbit with it. Does a great orbit, no problem at all. And we did uh, uh, tracking and it does GPS tracking well. Uh, and you know what? I can say flying it. It, it flew fine. Uh, is it as precise as like a, a, a DJI Mini or something like that? No, you wouldn't expect it to be at under $200, but it flies good. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking to, uh, to, to start out with a drone and, and, and want to try something, uh, the only thing I'll caution you on is, again, those calibrations can be kind of tricky. What I'll tell you is just to be persistent and, and you'll get it. Also, you saw the first time I took off, you know, I kind of gave up on the compass calibration and the drone immediately went into that toilet bowl and I brought it down to land it. And when I did, it flipped over in the grass and I just noticed just now we did get a nick on, uh, on one of the props here. So it's not bad, but what happened was it flipped over in the grass, folded the arm over and, and nicked that prop. But uh, in any case, uh, uh, you know, that's, other than that, it flew great and, you know, everything that I would expect it to do. So uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, the uh, Isheen uh, EX4, this is the pro version, uh, three kilometer range. And of course, we didn't have a chance to test range on it. Maybe one of these days we'll get it out in the country where we can take it out a little bit further and, and see how well it does. But we didn't, we, we never lost connection. We didn't have any of those kind of problems just flying it here in the park. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye now.